Hello and welcome to this new section, section 3, where we'll be studying signaling, the last element we need for developing a full web RTC application. Signaling will provide a point where the peers can meet. In this section, we are explaining why there is no signaling protocol for web RTC and the fact that forces the programmer to look for a signaling solution outside of the web RTC API. We will also learn how to program a simple Node.js server. This is the first video of this section. In this video, we will understand the need for a signaling protocol. We will also go through the arguments needed for standardizing a signaling protocol. We will also debate between the pros and cons of signaling. As we have already said, WebRTC apps won't work unless the peers find a way to tell each other how they can be reached. And this is a step to take into account before the ICE exchange. Peers should register in a place where, if somebody wants to connect to them, a notification will be sent for starting a negotiation. Could WebRTC implement a signalling protocol? Yes, it could, but it didn't. Why? Because there are pros and cons related to this question. We are going to enumerate some of them. Let's talk about pros. Some experts say that a signaling protocol inside WebRTC would be an unacceptable constraint to it. Nowadays, there are different protocols for signaling messages without a standard one. The fact that WebRTC could fit with any of them makes it attractive. You don't need to adapt what already exists to WebRTC in principle. If you want to connect to a telephone line which supports SIP as a signaling protocol, you'll be able to use it with WebRTC. Summarising, if you want to take profit of the advantages of another protocol to work with different ones, you will be able to. Let's talk about cons now. Designing your own signaling interface would not be easy. A connection has to be kept to be directional. And this breaks the original idea of HTTP of unidirectional service. Using WebSockets, HTTPS and other tools, you can solve those problems. But sometimes there's still a risk of having timeout disconnections if the network complexity is high. For this course, we'll focus on the simplest and fastest alternative. We won't try to consider as much context as possible. We just want to see a basic WebRTC app work and understand how it does so. In this video, we've learned that we have a new problem, the signaling one. Since WebRTC doesn't implement it, the pros overpower the cons, because it's better in terms of flexibility and avoiding some problems, like complexity due to HTTP not prepared to be bidirectional. In the next video, we'll learn about the three main solutions capable of providing signaling for WebRTC.